God's Letter The letters that we hold most dear, that come from those we love, are letters that describe to us the one we're thinking of, the one for whom our heart's desire is hoping every day will share the beauty of our thoughts in everything they say. But there is not a letter that can match the one I see, the one I read each morning as I drop on bended knee, in rich anticipation of what I will surely find in words like threads of silver from God's golden heart that bind my joys and my affections to the one who died for me because he could not bear the loss that he would surely see. If he would not the sacrifice for my transgressions be, the only living sacrifice from sin to set me free. And for this love he suffered as he hung upon the cross, that all who read his letter should not have to suffer loss, if they would simply open up their hearts to let him in, the Savior come from glory, born to die for all our sins. But we, it seems, so often tend to turn away our eyes and let our minds be captivated by the devil's lies that keep us ever wandering along a path of sin to die at last a vagabond like other worldly men. Because we would not take the time to read God's words of life, the living words of beauty penned to help us through this strife that soon will meet its final end for all who've come to be enraptured by the timeless love that lives to set us free. As by his Holy Spirit, God inspires you and me as we embrace his letter of his love that helps us be reflective of his character, who died to make us whole, the perfect revelation of God's pre-creation goal. So linger not too long, my friend, on otherworldly things that captivate your mind so you don't see what's happening, but seek God while he may be found, before it is too late, through prayer and meditation that you know the devil hates. Because it draws your heart to him who gave his life for you and soon will come to finish all God said that he would do. For reference, Jeremiah fifteen sixteen through 21 and Revelation 21, 1 through 7.